dump their jack <laughs> of Pepsi. I'm there for the pack out. You just got to pack me in. Committed to the bow early on. Like, I love getting close and putting up. You cover a range of stuff on here, too, right? Like, we call this the, uh, the THP World Headquarters. You know, my grandpa Roy Weatherby. I came into, like, that golden little pocket where there was, like, four or five different bowls. Just... You're Canadian? We're doing yeah, a I... Canadian podcast? My name's Douglas Boat. I'm Robbie Denning. Roy Candy. Can you hear it properly? Yeah, yeah, no, I was just wondering if it was really fucking snap right now I swear to god go grab a coffee or go grab i got a one here man you, you know what it's okay go grab a snicker you know what started you know what started the day off i go to i make a coffee this morning and i didn't put the like the filter. you know the thing that the filter goes in that little oh, attachment shit. sits in the coffee pot yeah i didn't put it in there properly and then the lid didn't close and then i go back 10 minutes later and there's fucking coffee and grinds all over the counter table. Yeah. I've been there. Done that. <laughs> so, and Save. then I come down here and nothing fucking works. So, so um, I'm going to assume you, you stayed calm, cool and collective cleaning up the coffee too. I just left. Is it? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cleaned it up. <laughs> wife would snap. She's oh, I'm pretty sure nobody can sh- sleep. Like nobody can sleep like my wife. I swear to God. But She'll, she's like, I wish I could get as much sleep as her, man. It's impressive. Very nice. So, what's up, boys? Good morning. Morning. We're live. We're recording. So, yeah. So, how's the week? Fuck, the week flies by. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Feels like we need more days in the week just to get some shit done. Yeah, it's nice now that uh, the days are definitely getting a little longer, which... Makes yeah. life a lot easier. Yeah, right now the morning shift is kind of showing its benefits for sure. Just getting off at 2.30 and having the extra daylight on top of that can definitely get more done than even a month ago. Yeah, difference. that's a good shift. Yeah. Definitely a good shift. I see you got your, uh, you're got you shooting your bowing downstairs now. Yeah, I got stuff cleared out enough. And just uh, today where I'm shooting against, I just got to change of plans down here just for the finishing touches so i gotta paint another eight feet of wall which is not a big deal and then the other wallpaper that i did order for the backdrop it's supposed to be here tuesday so it's getting there it's almost nice. almost there yeah so how about you Derek? how's your how's your week sorry to cut you off there Pete. oh that's all good just busy just uh start shooting my bow outside which is really nice honestly been shooting in my garage and it's just not it's, that doesn't feel as nice shooting at 60 and seeing what's going on. Um, yeah, I've seen you're at the range, Dirk. Yeah, 60, 70, and then at 100. The snow drifts are pretty deep, so it's pretty soaking wet. But, uh, yeah, no, it's been a pretty good week. Did my physio. Nice. Uh, ten, tendonitis in my patellar. <laughs> oh. So, going to be working yeah. through that. Um it's not debilitating or anything by any means, but uh, it's good to work on that stuff in the off season. So definitely yeah. got a couple of things to work on for weights and just range of motion routine stuff. And then neck strain stuff, uh, I told him what I was doing, how much, how much frequency I want to be shooting with my bow. So they gave me some stuff to work on with that too. Nice. So pretty good. Pretty productive. Yeah. This is the time to do it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Did I tell you guys I started working with a running coach? Yeah. Oh yeah. You did. I did. I, okay. I, I was won't a get disappointed. Again, but <laughs> it's a lot different. Like the the routine we do is way different. Like we're not. I'm not running. Like I we run like they have this chart, and so like you have to like you run for a bit to meet a certain level, and then you back off and you run like pretty crazy. I never would have done it that way, but I mean, you, that, how often are you doing that? Right now, three only three times a week. So. Um. Yeah. So, Derek, I got a bunch of uh, swag for you. I'm sending out your way. Uh, Pete, I put a bunch of clothes together for the shoot this awesome. July. Yeah, July. And I'm sending some other stuff to Stuckless, but I do have all. I fuck, man. I I had a whole like. I got all this stuff because we're gonna get some new swag with a new logo on it. So uh, you guys see what I'm pointing to the, for the listeners and. Every until I'm going to be giving away all this stuff 
until that shelf is empty. Normally there's a, a couple skulls on there and some some really good books like uh Doug Bose's book and all that stuff. All I think there's a few other really good ones in there too. But um I'm gonna be giving away all this stuff. So to get it, all you have to do is go over to YouTube, watch these videos and comment, subscribe, and then I'm just gonna pick at random some people and I'm just gonna give them all away because I got way too much. And like a lot of them are funky sizes. So if you're out there listening or watching and like, I have a lot of double XLs, a lot of small stuff like that. I do have some larges, like the standard sizes. But one thing when you have a lot of clothes, most people buy, like you have to do it in like, you do it in like six, 12, 18 increments, increments of six when you're getting it made. So you get a lot of larges and extra larges made, some mediums, but obviously you get stuck with like, I do some double, I was doing some double XLs and stuff like that. So you get a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. Now, like I said, they're not all double XL. There is some larges and extra larges in there. There's some hats too. Can't see them, but as that pile goes down, you get, you'll see the hats. But anyway, so just go over there, subscribe, like, and um, just leave a comment in the videos. Now to watch these videos, you have to, you can't go to the focus hunting YouTube because I can't get access back to that one. Um, so you just go to, just type in Kevin toy and you'll see all our podcast videos under that one. Um, yeah. So what are we doing today, boys? We're doing a gear dump. Oh, what, um, one other thing I had to write, talk about one of the listeners, it was the last podcast that we were doing. We were talking about where CWD was found. Yeah. It was in, what, what did I say? It was Libby, Montana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where the CWD was found, just south of you. So to the listener who wrote in and uh, shared that with us, thanks. And um, yeah, what else were we talking about in our little group chat there? Uh, Did you guys see those pictures of that hog that that guy sent me? Oh, man. Hog attack. attack. Brutal. Yeah. Insane, eh? Makes you want to have a bigger gun, not a bow. I don't know what he was hunting him with, but holy shit, did he get torn up? Yeah, I'll throw those up so you have to watch it to see what we're talking about. But I'll throw these pictures up in this in this conversation right now so the guys listening or watching can see it. But Jesus. Almost makes you insane. want to drag a cannon around with you in the back country. Gonna like that. Oh, man, off. you imagine how aggressive like oh. those hogs must be pretty pretty vicious. Oh, I've heard they're like just tough rattlesnakes and yeah. Pretty wicked. There's something. Do you guys have, have you guys had a lot of those your way, Derek, that you know of? I'm I'm on the Facebook group for Feral Hog Watcher. (laughs) Yeah. But I haven't seen out like any out in the backcountry, really. Uh, Maybe, maybe farther north, that's where they kind of been concentrated. But I haven't seen uh, any, any out in the wild. Farther north. Like how far north are we talking? Crazy. Uh, like when we get into the foothills area, that's where a lot of the reports have been. There's been some in southern, but I don't know how how real that is. Looks like a little bit of like escapees and stuff like that, but yeah. it's not the actual high concentration coming out of it. I think it's coming from Saskatchewan across. So, yeah, it's uh spotty too. A lot of guys are going after them, so. Hopefully it stays like that. I wonder if it has something to do with the climate up here, why they're not, like, because down in the States, they can't kill them as fast as they're breeding. Yeah. So I wonder if it has something to do with just the temperature, if it's more conducive to them down there and they just like it more down there. I yeah. Mean, and, you know, it could, know. it could too be just like, you know, it's not a linear thing. It could just be it gets to a certain population and steeply increases like in the States. Right. Oh, yeah. it, once they get established and then there's more than one population and then they start, uh, you know, rooting around then they start to really establish a big population and then the population gets crazy. Because yeah. I've heard they've adapted pretty good to the Canadian cold. Like I've heard of the thing they're they actually call them pig glues. Like when it gets like freakishly cold, they just stack on top of each other and lay together. And just basically use their each other's body heat to uh, to survive the cold. Let the snow fall down on them, and that's not good. It's just like <laughs> I'd never heard or seen that before. But yeah, I saw. I can't remember where I read it. 
or saw it, but yeah, it was a legitimate article. And I was just like, holy shit. Cause that's what I thought. I thought that, you know, especially Alberta and Saskatchewan winters, I thought for sure that'll keep them at bay. But it seems like they um, figured out a way. Yeah. They're tough as all hell. I wanted to add one more thing here that I forgot to mention. So the guys at mountain tough, um, they sent me their app. I have access for both you guys as well. So Mountain Tough, those who aren't familiar with Mountain Tough, it's just basically they they put together these fitness programs and I was going through them. They're really good. They got if you don't have access to weights, there's body weight workouts and it's basically you can pick what you're training for. You know, there's there's ones for rocking. Um, like I said, there is some weighted ones and they come up with all these different programs and there's six, twelve eight depending on which program you pick um but they're really good um if guys looking to, you know if they need help getting in shape and they're not sure what to do um i do have access you guys get 30 percent off for the people listening so i'll put those in the show notes um so all you have to do is go over download their app click on the link that i provided down below to our listeners and um you're going to get 30% off on their app. Awesome. Pretty cool. Wicked. Yeah, it's really good. I uh, I did one of their workouts before. My workout routine is pretty tight right now, so I did it after I did my regular workout. But, uh, yeah, it's really good. I did the one of the body weight workouts, That's which right. I like those ones too because they really work on, like, flexibility and stuff. Like they, It's incorporated, obviously, with with the – workout just because the nature of it so you're doing more you know the the exercises you do you are doing they're more flexible like working on flexibility and stuff like that which is nice because as yeah, you know, a lot of that repeat, is get stiff yeah a lot of that's really important especially if you're going to do like one legged uh like stocks like where you really have to be on one leg and you're creeping around i found that yeah. anything that is body weight stability and Sorry to say, almost like a yoga thing, but just to get that flexibility so you have full range of motion. So if you're like half bent your knee, this isn't the first time you're doing it and then you're falling over or something and then blowing your stock, right? Yeah, for sure. No, it definitely helps. And then if you're in areas that are steep and, you know, you're climbing over trees and you slip, you know, if you're flexible, you're not going to tear anything. You're going to be able to have that movement, make that adjustment. If you're really stiff, that's when you tear, you start tearing yeah. shit. And that fuck, it's nasty getting out of the back country. Nice having that variety too of something totally different. Well, not necessarily totally different, but different from your normal workout program. Cause yeah, it's cool too. If you want to just go in there and just uh, like, just try something new. Um, yeah. Yeah. They Keeps got lots fresh. of stuff. Yeah, it does. They've, they've got lots of cool stuff in there. And I haven't gone through it all because I was just talking to um, just talking to them at the end of the week here. So we'll get into more of that. Anyway, um, we're going to do a gear review. So who wants to go first? Want me to go first? Actually, I see I got two Hoyt shooters now to deal with. Fuck me. Yeah. Derek, yeah. you know what? I think you should also come to the Bighorn 3D shoot and put the pressure on Kevin. Hoyt versus <laughs> Kevin. Yeah. Watch him crumble under the pressure just like last year. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep my bow away from you. That's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Every year it's yeah. something. But you gotta be you gotta watch Pete. He's craft. This year I'm gonna go a day early, so Pete ain't gonna have the upper edge. He ain't gonna oh. be able to do those extra rounds and I'll be there two days early. <laughs> yeah, you'll I'll get you guys will probably have it set up a month now, a month early. You're gonna be putting the pressure mm -hmm. on the boys. No, nope, we gotta get it set up. <laughs> gotta get my rounds in. <laughs> Um, okay, gear dump. So we're going to do this gear dump. Now, we're not going to get into everything we used um, just because like throughout the year, depending on the hunt and the place I'm going, I use a lot of different stuff where like if you're doing a backpack hunt, you can, use, you know, depending on where you're going, you're going to be using different tents mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I didn't do any backpack hunts this year um, that I was, you know, backpack, backpack hunts that I was sleeping out of a tent. So we're just going to leave that out of it. I think we'll just keep it pretty like generic of what we typically keep in our backpack. Um. So yeah, so maybe I'll start off. So like this year again, I was running the uh, Mystery Ranch pack of um, 
Good pack. The only thing I don't like about Mystery Ranch is the really small straps on their packs. So, uh, unfortunately, they don't have a way to change them out. That's the only thing that I find bugs me a little bit with those packs. Like, is, are you talking um, length or are you talking like how, how wide the straps actually are? How wide they are themselves. I lost video here. What's going on? Sorry, guys. Why the, okay. Oh, that's not what I want. Too close. No, it was way better before. <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, there we oh, go. That's good. That's Hold good. On. Oh, yeah. We're good. Let's go with that. Roll with that. Roll with that? Yeah. Okay. Hold on a sec. Keep shutting off. No, I don't want to. Hold uh -oh. Okay. Guys are listening. Sorry. If you guys, if the listeners hear a big crash and shit going down, Kevin's clearing off his desk again. I've already done it once. Okay, it's good. <laughs> Fuck me. So anyway, um, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, my backpack straps. Um, yeah, anyway, that's the only thing I don't like about that the Mystery Ranch packs. Um, but I do like the fact that they're light. They're semi-waterproof. You don't have to put a cover on them. Um, but I'm not going to get onto that. So typically what I carry in my backpack, obviously, that everybody should be carrying it's a first aid pack kit, some sort of, you know, it's got something to stop any bleeding. Uh, mine is pretty elaborate. It's got uh, some some thread stitching, some tape, um, some ibuprofen. Um, it's got a um, UV pen for sterilizing water. It's got some UV pills for sterilizing water. Um, it has some, you know, things like Vaseline, um, non-scented Vaseline, extra batteries, Oh, what else do I got in that? Just, you know, um, things that, you, that you'd that you think you need in the backcountry that there's just, but not too much of it. Um, I'm not going to get into what's exactly in there just because this would take forever for all three of us to go through. So I have that. I have um, some Hudo game bags, awesome game bags. You could reuse them. Head over to Hudo.com, as you can see. I'll put a link in the description too for that. Um, I always carry... Um, some gloves in my pack. I don't really like gloves, but I do carry them. Um, just in case I use the Sitka gloves. Uh, I have my peaks, walking sticks, uh, my spotting scope always sits in there. Um, what else do I have? A pair of gaiters. Um, this year I, I was using APE and the peak skaters this year. Um, the both, you know, good and bad, both of them. I mean, um, AP, a lot of really good things about them. There's a couple things I don't like about the peaks. Um, I just don't really like how hard it is to get the strap off each time. Um, that little buckle, that little, this little piece here. And again, if you're listening, you got to go watch. There's that little piece right here. That's oh, yeah. the strap. It's really hard to get your fingers in there to do it. Like I have no fingernails. Like just to release it. it? Yeah, just to release it. I mean, so what I end up doing is I just push that off and then I just pop it right off the oh, I just oh, pop yeah. it right off like that. I don't know if you guys can see that. Camera's kind of far away. But anyway, that's the only thing I don't like, but it's not huge. But anyway, um these things are great, really durable. Um yeah, so those are good. And then that's about it for like the main part. And then up top, I always have, are you kidding me here? Keeps my, my video keeps shutting off here. So bear with me. Anyway, um, this thing, I always have a little switch blade saw. So this one is the, the pocket boy, the silky pocket boy. This thing is sharp as hell. I have a bigger one of these in my SUV. Like, I don't even carry a chainsaw anymore. This thing is just dead. I was going to ask, is that just for wood, or can you get through bone with that? You can get through anything with that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave that on there, because I, I don't know what's going on with my video. Um, yeah, so a little saw like this is great to have. Um, this, I always have. I have a few lighters. I have fire starter. Actually, the fire starter is in my first aid kit, so it's always dry. Um, little lighter. You guys can see that. Are you fucking kidding me here? Okay, I'm just going to switch the video over here. I'm just going to go to this. Because it always wants to switch back. Yeah, okay. 
So these oh, things. That's your UV the, one, right? Yeah, this thing. You just reach. You just charge this in and, and recharge it. This thing is awesome. That's sweet. Yeah, waterproof. You could soak this in water. It doesn't get wet. Obviously, my new favorite things ever. The boot dryers. Unreal, yes. small. So. Like I was talking in our group chat there, I put, so what I did was I took a pair of my old work boots, got a bucket of water, dumped one in the bucket of water, completely submerged it, put it in the sink, did the same to the other one, put these things in there. This was at four o'clock when I did it. Started put, went to put the kids down for bed, eight o'clock, the boots were dry to the touch. Now I'm not, if you would have put your foot in there, it still would have got wet because under underneath it was wet but like still for four hours pretty amazing especially soaking it uh, right in a bucket of water yeah yeah for right. sure man um another great thing i have i always keep in my bag just because it's small is this thing here i don't use this i didn't use this at all this year but it comes in handy in a lot of a lot of times if you're trying to start a fire or to light or to inflate your cot it's got a light on it too it's just a little mini blower um, oh yeah, so this thing works <laughs> awesome. The mic batteries might be dead, but you can see it's got a really bright light, which is nice. You could hang it too from your tent like this. Yeah, I cool. got this thing on Amazon. This thing was like forty bucks. This thing is money, and it's got like that's bright. It's really bright. It's crazy bright. And then you can awesome. hear it. Just a little. Yeah, so super cool. I always have this in my backpack. Like I said, I didn't use it at all this year, but I do use it quite a bit when I'm doing those backpack hunts. Um, That'd be really good too for even if you're uh, field dressing an animal in the dark and you hang it on if you got branches or something to. Yeah, it's nice to have. It's nice to have a little light. My Cedar Summit Spork always sits in there. Don't use that all the time, but it's there. Ribbon for blood tracking, hockey tape must have um and ass wipe with some hand cleaner i use rv ass wipe because it's uh biodeg like it, it uh, dissolves a lot faster than regular toilet Basically, paper gotta get a couple extra layers in there so you don't go two knuckles deep yeah <laughs> yeah something like <laughs> gotta that. be careful with that <laughs> um so and i always have my outdoor edge with rechangeable blades. I I don't use this. I started using my fixed blade. Like last year or the year before, I started using my fixed blade. I always have my fixed blade on attached to my pack like this. So oh, okay. as you can see, it is basically, I ended up actually, I think I glued the strap because it kept falling out, but I glued it in there. Um, so this knife is by Gerber. I love this knife. It's, you know, I like things. I like the orange just because when you put them down, you can see it. If it's black or colored, it's hard as hell to see. I think generally um, everybody's, I mean, the, every knife looks awesome. But I'll guarantee you, anybody that's done any field dressing at night, put their knife down. And then has that panic moment of where the fuck did my knife go? Because you can't find it because it's either camo or black. Everybody oh yeah, and eventually switches over to a bright handle at some. Yeah, point. for sure. Um, and that's just it. Like that's what happened, right? Like I, I've done it before, and like you know, those are great gifts to get. So like you always get one from like your mom or your wife or something like that. You get a good knife, but it's black. You use it once or twice. You put it down. You can never find it again. You're like, okay, come on. So that's why I like the orange. Everything orange. Like it's you know, the lighter. Same with on my release. On my release, I customized that Carter um, Insatiable, but I drilled a hole through and I put a uh, a strap on it that goes on my wrist. Number one, so it's on my wrist. Number two, I use bright orange. So if I drop it, which I have dropped it, I can mm -hmm. always see it easy because it's got the bright orange. That's and good. I remember when I was antelope hunting, somehow fell off my hand. And yeah, um, my buddy I was with, Carrie, he found... He just seen the orange strap sticking through the, the tall grass. So um, I like the orange um, nice. for sure. And we don't have any, there's no, like on us, there's no restrictions up here in Canada. There's no restrictions for if you're wearing, you have to wear a certain amount of orange. I mean, I don't know, maybe that'll come one day, but mm -hmm. right now it's not. 
Um, I always have a battery pack too. On the last, I have this one in here. This is a, a fairly big one. It's um, this is uh, it's called a Type S. Really good. It's really big. Um, I don't normally like if I'm going on a backpack hunt. I'm not carrying this one. The last hunt I was on was out of my truck, so I used this one. But I mean, this the run runs everything. Like it was running my phone, charging my phone every night, doing everything. So it's good to have a battery pack and like we could go through maybe one day i have a bunch of different battery packs i got some that are rechargeable um like solar powered ones um we can get into that maybe another day but just um i always have some sort of battery charger pack in my um, backpack now i never used to carry one all the time like if, for just day hunting i never carried one until you remember a couple of years ago pete and this was before we knew you derek I was on a, a black bear hunt, killed a black bear, and my headlamp, everything ran out of power. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so That's I always cool. have my Garmin GPS on me all <laughs> times, no matter if I'm going to check trail cameras. Sorry, I should have took it out. Anyway. I always carry this on me no matter what I'm doing. If I'm going to check tra trail cameras, I'll clip it on. I'm just going out for the day. I'll clip it on just because, man, you never know. Mm -hmm. um, you fall down, break a leg, um, lose the keys to your truck, anything like that, right? Like I, I know buddies who have done that, who have been out and they lost the keys to the truck and they had to walk all the way back to get cell service hours and hours and hours. And then um, it's just nice to have one of those, so... A that buddy of mine uh, last year, he was real early getting into his elk hunt spot. I was actually supposed to go call elk with him, um, text him, "Hey man, what's going on? I haven't heard from you for a bit." Uh, for a bit, and I guess he rolled a squad and it landed on his leg and broke his uh, femur, and oh, he yeah, didn't. God. And he didn't have a a Garmin or anything, so ever since then it's been a 100 percent. every single time you go out you have to have some way of calling for help because he said it was 10 hours of absolute hell until uh, another hunter found him so and when you're thinking about bracing your leg with arrows out of your quiver and just shit like that just terrible lots of misery so yeah. uh ever since then it's 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 a 100 percent to have some sort of way to call for help or GPS or something. And then for sure you have to have some sort of battery because if it runs out and you need it. Yeah. And on, to exactly. on top of that too, don't think by keeping it in your backpack in the back of your backpack, that's a great place for it because if your backpack's on, you're yeah. laying on your back, you can't move, you can't get to it. Or if it yeah. flings off, let's say you're on your quad or whatever, and your backpack's 40 feet away now. Yeah, it's it's not going to do you any good because you got to get to it. You might be pinned. Have it on your chest or something like that, or somewhere literally you can reach in front of you somehow to turn it yeah, on. You're, all, if... you're always carrying whenever you go into the bush, like you're always carrying a bino harness, yeah, or something like that. Because I mean, like you got card readers in there. You got you know, this, like who doesn't go out without the binoculars, right? Like realistically, yeah. So yeah, you always want it on your chest, and like I learned the hard way. To even if you're going out for a day hunt, take a battery pack because we're not as on top of our game. Well, at least I'm not anyway. I'm definitely not on top of it as much as I should be. I don't get home, take everything out, recharge the batteries. Sometimes I leave the fucking things on in the pack, put them back without turning them off completely. Stupid things like that that I shouldn't do and then not check them. So it's good to always have some sort. I always have some sort of battery pack. And what I do... A lot of the times with those battery packs is I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and then put them in my backpack because right. they're not waterproof. Like my Garmin is totally waterproof, but those I'll throw them in a Ziploc bag, then throw them in my my backpack just in case you get pissed on, getting wet. It's just nice to keep that water and moisture off those things. Yeah, that's a good point because too, uh, you do need to figure out as well like if you're going to drop your pack at any point that's uh and going on a stock without your pack you know maybe if you have some basic survival stuff in your vinyl harness if you have a little pocket for fire start or something mm -hmm. um just thinking about it a little bit beforehand because i've had that where i don't have water my gps is back in my pack 
and you know how it is. You get on a stock or elk, especially, or something happens that you didn't think was maybe you get a second chance and then now you're now you're two thousand yards from your pack and getting close to the last light and then you you gotta hike back and if something were to happen, you know, you have nothing, right? Yeah, for sure. And it's always <clears throat> It's not ideal to drop your pack. Obviously, where you are, Corey, it's definitely more. I feel like it's one of those places and just like the topography and landscape where you need to do it a little bit more. But like, I've put my pack down, man, and then been like, where in the fuck did oh, I yeah. put my fucking pack? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because when we uh, shot, when my kid shot his elk and he dropped his pack, um, when we're when we we're uh doing our first load of elk out, he's like, So, so you don't want to drop your pack. I'm like, Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. You don't want to ever drop your pack because <laughs> now we have to double pack, go and get it. It's and and you're hauling out meat without your pack. So, you know, I gave him my pack and I'm throwing a quarter over my shoulder. It's just like you need your pack. It's better yeah. to keep your pack really efficient and lightweight. Yes, um, like 100%. obviously with mule deer hunting in the prairies, you can't have a pack. There's just, there's mm -hmm. like, sometimes there's just, there's no cover and the lower you can get it, it's conducive to a successful stock. But when you're in the trees and stuff, it's just not a good idea. Yeah, for sure. And I think in times like that, there is, they do make a lot of those, like, um, those hip packs that are really nice. Like not the yeah. big ones, just like a little fanny pack. Kafaru actually just sent us one for the giveaway for the BC sportsman. Oh, nice. Shoot that we're uh okay. we're doing so for the listeners i'm just going to plug this real quick we're hosting uh a live podcast at the bc interior sportsman show it is april 5th at no april 6th at 3 p.m so if you're in bc you want to come check it out we're going to be talking up there we're um adam yankee from beyond the kill is going to join us mike defeo from hudo uh, I haven't talked to Jesse Zeman yet, but we're going to try to get him up there. Um, Pete's going to try to make it down. Uh, well, I'm going to be there. Okay. Pete says he's going to be there. Maybe we can convince Corey to come. We'll see. But uh, we got a lot of giveaways. So, you know, Vortex, Chipped In, Kafaru, Mystery R, Sitka, um, um, that Grackshaw. We got a couple of those boot dryers to give away, or one set, actually, I think. Uh, we got a couple. Man, we got a whole bunch of stuff. We'll get into it as it gets a little closer. I'll get a full list, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, anyway, so those those little, you know, like fanny pack style um, packs are good. I use one of those when I'm turkey hunting just because I don't like to carry around the big backpack. Um, I just have, you know, all my calls and stuff in the, in the side pouch for the kids and stuff um, and whatever they need, bottle of water, something like that. So um, really good to have. Yes. Try not to drop your pack and you, if you can, and that's a good point, Corey. Um, don't put a bunch of stuff in there you, you don't need. Now, obviously, this is a trial and error process. You have to – it's going to take you a lot of time to figure out exactly what you need and and for the type of hunts you're doing. Um, but I, I guess it's one of those things, right? It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, um, but uh, Yeah, definitely. There's, uh, there's a cash raise for that, and you're packing your fears. Yeah, you're packing your fears. That's why um, when I'm calling in some of these hunters, I always like to I'll glass them up, and I see their packs are just full, humongous, <laughs> huge puppy packs full of everything. The kitchen sink, and uh, I'm like, oh, it's some new guys. It's good. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's just you're you're packing your fears, right? If you're worried about something, you're definitely going to pack probably a little bit extra gear. But um, yeah, and trial, as you get more comfortable, hairs, yeah, that will, that exactly. will change too. Yeah, that stuff usually um, stays in my truck if I can. It's like it's still accessible, but yeah, yeah, it's not on my yeah, legs for sure. my back. <laughs> a lot of those, yeah, exactly. A lot of the things too, and like if you're if you're if you're at camp, hunting out of your truck, you can keep a lot of that stuff that you think you might need in your truck. Just keep the stuff that you need for immediate use in your backpack. You know, like mm -hmm. your your first aid kit, your Garmin GPS, whatever you're using. Um, you know a knife, some game bags. If you get an animal down, basically stuff like that, that you need to, if you get an animal down, you can deal with it, get it out before it gets too hot. If you're hunting in the, the hotter months. Um, so you don't have any meat loss. And then also number one is to make sure that you can get out safely. Uh, and then I ran this FHA, FHF. Is it FHF? What the fuck this is? Yeah. FHF gear, bino harness. Um, 
most of the year. I this year I used uh, the I was running Swaros, the NL Peers, love those. In my little pack, I always have an elk call, always, even if it's not mm -hmm. elk season. Um, I have a little multi tool. This one is a mossy oak. I'll put a link in the show notes. This one is great. I had a Leatherman and I lost it. It was a two hundred dollar Leatherman. I bought this for forty bucks, and it is pretty much the exact same as the oh, Leatherman. Yeah. Just doesn't have the Leatherman name. Um, wind checker always in the other side, for sure. And then in my little zipper pocket, I've got a, a reed. I always keep in there. Mm -hmm. um, I got a card reader. I like to check my cards at the game camera. Some people like to take them out and check them at home. I don't. Um, this is a little tool that attaches to that mossy oak. Now, I've switched this out and put all the bits that fit the stuff that I'm using. So like my bow, it's got the Torx head and I need, it's got the Allen key I need, it's got a flat head. Everything I need to work on my bow or anything else I'm carrying is in this. I keep that in there. What else I got in here? I think I got a couple cards. I don't need to see those. And a reed. And I use that pretty much all the time. I like to have an extra reed and a call in there, even if I'm not. I've used this call. I've used this elk call. I don't even know who makes this freaking thing. This green. Uh, I'll show you. I can't remember. I'm freaking terrible today. Oh, right here. This is the cowgirl. Cowgirl call by Primos. Okay. I've used this thing a lot. And now I use this. I can mimic um, bond distress calls in this thing. Doe calls. Um, and I also you like this when you're predator hunting. If you see a coyote wolf or something, you can just make some whiny noises on this thing. So I love that. I always have that call on me at all times, 100%. Um, this FHF pack was pretty good. Um, the only thing I didn't like now, they might have different sizes. I don't know, but the straps on this one, they weren't very adjustable. You can see they're maxed out here. Oh, okay. So I didn't like it because it sat too low on my chest. Do you know what I'm saying? Pulling down on your yeah. neck and giving you a sword. Yeah, I like stuff. it. I just like my bino harness a little higher in my chest. Now everybody's different, and that's the thing about these bino packs. And Pete and I, you've or Pete, we've talked about this lots. Yeah. You can't always get like. Unfortunately, some things on one brand are going to be you're going to mm -hmm. like, and you're not going to like, and then like one thing on another brand you're going to really like and not like. So it's just one of those things, and like on. Fucking bino harnesses, man. I, I don't know how many bino harnesses I've gone through, but it's been a lot. Um, But next year, I don't think I'm going to run this one. I think I'm going to try something else. And I, I really do, like in the early season, I really like just having my binos on a strap on my neck and then having my rangefinder. I don't use a ra uh, I don't use a pocket for my rangefinder. I always have my rangefinder in my pocket, in my pant pocket or my jacket pocket or my hoodie pocket. Um, so that pretty much wraps up like what's in my everyday pack. Um, like I said, we could get, you could get into a lot of things, but we're just not too going to, cause there's three of us. And you know, there is a lot of like, if you want to get into like the great, um, detailed gear dumps, go over and see Jay Nickel at Mindful Hunter. He's probably the yeah. best in the business at doing gear dumps and doing, getting into gear technical stuff. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else that I used um, other than like, you know, this year I was using that Under Armour gear. It was good, really light. I uh, had no complaints with any of that. I used a rain jacket when I was uh, on the coast. It worked really well for how much it was raining. Um, AKU used their boots. Um, these ones here. I did originally have all everything set up and then I had a hissy fit. So these are the boots I was using in October. You can't get these boots anymore. Um, I don't even remember what the heck these, I don't, these are, these are a few years old, but I was, I was blowing through a set of boots every year. And then I started using AKU and made the world a difference. But that being said, I do wear runners. 
I do wear runners um, for most of the season now because I'm bow hunting. So I use um, the AKU runners um, that they have. And I'll put links up to what I use in the show notes. And then also what we're going to do is we're going to add, I haven't even told you guys about this. What I want to do is I want to add on the webpage a complete gear list of everything we use um, just so guys can go and they can click on they can click on the gear list and then they can go down and see what we're running because we all hunt in different kind of different areas, you know, um, flat Pete's really rugged and steep where he is, you know, I'm kind of a mix between Derek and Pete. So it, for the listeners and people who want to see it, they can go over to the webpage soon, check out what we're using and where we got it from all that stuff. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that all up. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, like I said, the only thing I think I'm going to change this year is the vinyl harness. Um, everything else for the most part will keep the same. Um, you know, I am going to change up my optics this year, um, but we can get into that later. Uh, don't really need to get in that right now. Um, yeah. You guys got any questions about my gear? No, it sounds no, pretty just, solid. Yeah, it seems pretty solid. It's funny with the vinyl harnesses. That's what I was just going and grabbing. You know, I've been running this Kuyu now for two years and just stuff like this like you look like it's all mm -hmm. loose well it's yeah. stretched out checkers now falling out so maybe having a drawstring and that's mm -hmm. on both sides hey like you get to a certain point in its lifespan and that i don't like that because the reeds and stuff are falling out calls mm -hmm. i lost a nice phelps call this past year because of that and then having having the draw on the top it's nice but you got to watch your eye cups. I uh, had an eye cup actually crack because if it's on the top and then you slam down on it or like you go right into a prone or crawling or you have to get out of dodge quick because an animal's spotting you, this top slammed my eyepiece and I actually ended up cracking my eyepiece. Oh, shit. Yeah. So What, uh, what kind so of vinyls are you running, Corey, in there? Uh, I'm running – so I got two, two different kind of styles, like – if I'm doing more, like I was running these, um, the what Sig, are those ones I can't? Though the Sig Sig Sawyer. Yeah, Sig Sauer, uh, the Kilo three thousand BDXs. Right. And I actually run them with my uh, Garmin Tactex watch, so I can run ballistics through my watch integrated no, with no this system. No shit, eh? So that's, that's a range find. That's their range finding. Yeah. Unit. Yeah, it's a range cool. integrated range finding unit. It's good to about four thousand yards, and then oh, reflective sure. uh, targets. Um, yeah, it's around four thousand. Yeah, full sunlight. You can push it to past two thousand. I've never had an issue with uh, with within the mountains. You know, like you're ranging trees and stuff like that. You don't really have any issues. I think elk size and like actual like that size of target with like fur non reflective, around seventeen um 1800 yards max and then probably around that 15 to 1600 for like waving grass that's like mm -hmm. you know agricultural stuff um but they've been really good they've been really good they're a bit bulky that's the only thing i kind of i i feel like guys would have to get used to but uh they're pretty they're pretty nice they're pretty robust and they do have like uh you, you can run like a custom profile and then it's out to like 800 yards it'll just give you shoot two ranges then after that you need like a a kestrel something like this okay. for for like uh rifle and stuff like that you know it's pretty useful it's just if you have the time you can uh really figure out what's going on uh, as far right. as like your shot and your corrections but uh but for for uh archery and stuff it's pretty nice less movements right um, the only thing though, with, with, um, with the size and the weight of it, I have found that it can be kind of difficult when you're trying to run just with one hand and you got your bow in your other hand, it can be kind of yeah. heavy. Um, it yep. can kind of induce a little bit of buck fever in you. Cause you're, you're really anxious. If you have a real, like kind of a rolling hill and you have to be, be, uh, ranging a very fine target, it can be a little bit heavy. Maybe that's where you'd want to have just like your your Swaros and then a loose handheld to yeah, single okay. one. So I do have two loadouts for that. So I have this for, for my all around. And I did do some testing on uh, an Everly stock one that Eastman's gave me. 
Um, mm -hmm. And that one, I just have my binoculars. That one's really nice. Uh, it has on the side, kind of comes across so that if you put your stuff in there, even if it were to be loose, it's still shielded from getting hung on sticks and stuff. It's pretty nice that way. <clears throat> But uh, that's what I'm running for for optics. Um, do you want me to do my gear pack here? I might yeah, as well. Yeah, you, yeah you're rolling, rolling, buddy. You might as well. And that's a good point too. That's why I switched. Like I was running. I I did have. Um, I had the Vortex Furies with the built-in rangefinder, but that was yeah. one thing. When I switched over to just hunting with a bow. Yeah, it's impossible. Like it's so hard. You find like you're always. It's just too hard. And then if you if you invest in a really good clear um range finder you can use it you know in close in the places where you're getting in once you get into that spot where you're gonna set up and wait for the animal to come in you can use that as your glass um you know it but they do get pricey they're around a thousand dollars um so but like i said i'm investing in it as basically a second set of binoculars yeah and uh like I think it was 2016. I was running a Vectronics PLR F15 for it's like a long, long range level uh, range finder. At the time, it was way before Sig Sauer and all those other uh, manufacturers were out. Um, yeah, and uh, those one like that one was like a humongous huge bulky bulky uh, range finder, and that one I had to have its, its own separate harness. And then I would just like I'd have it in an actual harness, and then yeah. I would run uh, like you said, like an exposed. Like I had uh, HD razors, yeah. and I put I'd like pull them down and tuck them under, so that it'd be mm -hmm. like drawstring, yeah. and then you could just range. Yeah. But that one, like that's when range finders were absolutely huge, eh? Yeah. So yeah. just something to kind of consider. You know, you might have to configure it however you whatever your needs are for your hunt, but. Um, that's yeah, I switched for... to the full screen here because you're obviously a lot more organized than I am. So um, <laughs> everybody here, we're going to get a we're, we'll get well, a full screen. And I will say that uh, I have I have three types of setups. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, you know, I got an early season in archery. It's obviously it's lightweight, skim down temperature, um, and then a late season kind of loadout, um, which does have you know a setup for archery or or like an earlier season rifle yeah and then an extreme weather uh setup and because you know you don't want to be stopped hunting because it's minus 25 or minus 20 or minus 30 um but when you do that you do have some pretty uh extreme needs as far as protection yeah. so um just talking about um so obviously depending on the hunt like you had said earlier um will depend in, on that like say if i'm doing overnights um you know we're not getting into shelters but you know like a two a two person uh msr is a good uh or a seek outside uh four season if there's any any even remote chance of snow i'm going with four season probably carbon fiber isn't going to work you might need to have aluminum i know it's an added weight but um just with snow potentially landing on you that's going to probably potentially collapse your shelter eh? so mm -hmm. um and then you know just some lightweight stuff i've used in the past you know a nemo um mattress mm -hmm. and then um you know a uh a seek outside so like a dst tarp the tp but you need a tracking pole so you know that's something to consider too um and then potentially like the twilight or red cliff uh for like a tpc uh tp open shelter the only thing though is if there is even re the remote chance of ticks uh i would just go with the msr just because it does have some protection versus those other ones are open floor but they are super lightweight i went on a bear hunt in this one spring and i don't know what the fuck i was thinking like i have the i have uh you know i've got both tp and you know floorless and floored tents for this hunt, for some reason, I just brought a shelter and I just basically hung a shelter up over and I was sleeping on the ground. Holy fuck, was there a lot yeah. of ticks. Like, I wake yeah. up in the morning and, like, after I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? I'm going in, like, the perfect time for ticks. Yeah. And I'm sleeping on the ground here. So, yeah, that's a one really good point. Is, yeah. You know, um, yeah, everyone wants to be super lightweight and, and there is some even lighter stuff. Like, I was discussing with one of my friends, you know, he, uh, you know, Bibby Tarp. But 
that's the thing you're you're compromising uh, protection against the elements protection against bugs and uh and cold right so you know bib bibby sack hunting is not something that's for everybody so just you might want to test that out before you got all your gear with you and then you got water because that's one thing like oh yeah everyone packs it on oh it's pretty good it's not too bad but then you have a hotter hunt and you need a lot more water and then you double down on your water um and then before you know it you're way over your weight limit right so yeah. just some consideration so i won't i won't pull anything out but uh just something to consider and then just like you titanium deep spoon spork thing kind of thing um some 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 way to have you know we're using all these peaks meals and stuff like that uh some real lightweight option and then i'm running the uh the wind burner too um the one liter uh, just with how it's like extreme the wind is it's it's pretty important that you have like jet boil is pretty good too yeah. that's um, an msr I, right yeah yeah, yeah, MSR. Um pretty awesome. I've never had a go out on me. I've never had any issues issues with it. Um the little starter that comes with it, that doesn't work. So some sort of light or something. Yeah. But yeah, and that's a good spot too. I mine is the same it's the same setup as yours. Um I keep everything together like that. And I do keep a little lighter in there as well. Um just because yeah, those starters, they never freaking work on those things. Yeah, and then too, uh, again, just test it out, right? Um because then you know how many how many fuel cells you need, how much fuel you're going to be going through. Having a hot meal does kind of help with with especially if you're getting into cold weather stuff. Um, yeah. But again, there's there's more weight, right? So it's something to consider. Or and even then, a warm drink too is nice. Like a lot of oh, times, yeah. you you get into those like long days, like long mornings of, of glassing is a little colder than you think, man. It's nice to have like a warm tea or a warm coffee. Yeah, exactly. Right and uh it's obviously it's dependent on how much weight you're willing to carry um i've been doing yeah. a lot more in and outs day hunts just because i don't like to fully commit to an area especially with elk if i hike a big like i just increase my fitness to deal with that so if i hike a big section there's no if i don't find elk i'm confident out with my calling and where i'm at with my glassing that if i cover an area i'm not going back there yeah at least for a week so yeah. I have different spots I'll hit. So, um, you know, if you're going to commit to an area and go s steep and deep, you know, that's something you want to consider and, and probably try out in the preseason. And then uh, obviously we already talked about my vinyl harness. It's a good harness. Um, there's something that too, for like rifle guys. So I put in here and this is a Tempe sensor and, um, you know, this is something that uh, for long range shooters. So this sensor communicates with my watch, which communicates with my range finder all in unison. And uh, so it provides a, a atmospheric adjusted shot. So it actually is on the outside of my vinyl harness, just something to consider too. Um, you know, some of the refresh rates with this, it's not for snap shooting. It's like really fast. You know, you do have to make sure that everything has got your connectivity before you head out in the morning. And then you want to probably turn it off because it's a battery drainer. But if you're taking the longer shot or you want the absolute best uh, shot equation. And it does have a range card and, and uh, AV ballistics on here, too. So you can actually uh, go into like, I'll show you here. You can That's go wild. into a uh, range card. Where mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that it can yeah, show yeah. you all oh, yeah. the different and it's oh, uh, uh that's sweet. specific to your profile for your rifle. What, what Garmin is that? That's the uh Tactics X uh solar uh with applied ballistics. Nice, nice. Yeah, wow. I got the Phoenix Solar Phoenix and it's great. Like I use it a lot of I like it's funny, like my watch other than like when I'm hunting. Maybe I'll set a, a location or something, but it is connected to my phone. But most of my stuff activity with my watch is for training. Um, so everything you have there, is it interchangeable? Like yeah. it, it doesn't have to be Sig sort like Sig Source specific. It's not all the same brand, is it? Like you can run like you can connect it all together. Like the connectivity is really easy. It's really simple. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. Um, I mean, if I were to go away from SIG, there'd be some figuring out to do. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the BDX is specific for Bluetooth, but just how how uh, how good the technology's become now, and how budget friendly. Like, I mean, like the that one binocular 
you could probably change it with anything, right? It's just uh, making sure that it's compatible with with uh, whatever watch you're using. And I mean, these like you don't need all this stuff, right? This is just a redundancy. Um, and that's what I've learned because I've had where if this guy doesn't work, my Kestrel for some, some of my shots, and I'm not going to use it every time, I need this to work. And if this doesn't work, I need this to work. And, you know, you're just having that, especially with cold weather, you need to have redundancies built into everything. If it's, if it's nice weather, 20 degree, I don't need, I can just run my watch and that's what I do. Right. Um, but you know, just getting into minus 20 stuff starts breaking and, uh, batteries run out, even fresh batteries, um, stuff like that. So, you know, that's just something to consider, have some sort of redundancy built into your system. Um, I'm using the icon pro, uh, Kuyu pack. Um, and, you know, like talking about interchangeability in these two waist strap pouches, that's where I have different stuff. If it's, if it's archery, I'll have a bow cover. If I need to hike through a real terrible spot, I'll just throw this over my cams because I've had where I've had sticks kind of start fraying peeps and stuff where it's tied in and especially with like bear, bear country and stuff, uh, uh, you know, be kind of the area that Pete's in, you get some of that buck brush and you're trying to avoid some area that you, maybe you're getting cliffed out. I've had it with uh, one of my friends, Brett, where we just had to climb through some nasty stuff and your bow is just getting destroyed. So uh, like your strings, your cables, they're all getting frayed. And then I'll just throw this over if it's downpouring too, just to protect my string a little bit further. And then uh, obviously some sort of adapter, for my binoculars to go with some tripod. Um, you know, I always have that with me. Uh, and you know, uh, that's part of the early season. Like if I'm mule deer hunting, I'm probably, unless I'm spotting from a truck, um, I'm not gonna be taking out my big spotters, like stuff like this, like with a Manfrotto, I have a Manfrotto uh, 8000 carbon, big tripod. You know, maybe if you have two people, you could split it between uh, two different guys. But um, unless you're really concerned about covering some serious range with glass, and I'm like, you can't see far enough in some of those areas, um, I would just stick to something with your binoculars. Maybe, uh, and my other setup is a Leopold um, gold ring, a small condensed one, because I find after 30 power, it, it's diminishing returns uh, for some of the hunts that I'm on. And, you know, this is just what works for me. Um, might not work for you, but that's the point, right? You got to try stuff to figure out what works for you. And then um, just in this pouch, you know, and if I'm going to go on a stock, I got my uh, InReach Mini here. Um, and then that's all integrated into apps on my phone. And then I'll always have this and I'll just clip it on. If I'm going to dump my pack, I'll just clip this onto my bino harness and away we go. And then mouth reeds and chapstick, stuff like that. Another wind checker that's accessible. I always have one full one on my harness and then one ready to go in my pack. So if I'm l and I'm having a really obsessed about what's going on with wind, I always have one accessible. And then I always have a puppy coat. Sorry there, guys. Doesn't matter um, if it's an early season or not. I'll always have something um, that resembles. And, and if you're just new to hunting or you don't have like a full kit, don't worry about that. You know, it doesn't need to be a, a brand name puffy coat that's, you know, First Light or Under Armour Sitka or, or Kuyu. Um, you know, with some of my buddies, I just tell them, go to like atmosphere or somewhere at the end of the season, like in the middle of summer and go to that clearance rack and you're going to find something. I found Fuck a yeah. really nice, yeah, like really nice, uh, Columbia, yeah. you know, for under a hundred bucks and it was 400. And those, that's but a those extreme, like those guys that use those, those are, are just as good or a lot of them are even better than the stuff you get. That's camel. It's just yeah. not camel. Yeah. Like it's just you can find a black one or a gray one or a green one, and they're actually better. Like some of that stuff that they have for mountaineering and stuff is actually a lot better than they they built for hunting. It's just not in a camel pattern. And I yeah, think what exactly. everybody has to remember too is this has taken 
every one of us years and years and years of accumulating. Like it's not like our very first puffy jacket or, you know, binos or whatever, we're the top of the line. You know, you get the best of what you can right now. You do your research and you use it for as many years as you can. And then you upgrade slowly. Like, nope, the average person can't just go and buy the top of the line stuff all the time. You have got to figure out what works for you, what you need. Yeah. Talk to yeah, your buddies exactly. about why they have what they have and see if it's for you. And then you, you know, over the years you buy quality, you buy the best quality you can. And then over the years you upgrade it and eventually you don't have to upgrade it because that shit's going to last you a long ass time. Yeah, that's a great point, Pete. Um, it's it's funny that you say that because that's exactly what I tell people is you got to primarily you got to get the basics to get out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't go with like the top of the line that someone else is using. I would probably just just get what you need, get out there, invest in getting experience, invest on figuring out what your strengths are. Because like I like I call primarily for elk. Well, some guys, they spot and stock more for for elk primarily so you know like just those little nuances you're gonna find that some piece of gear really is crucial that you know some of us would be like yeah i would never pack that right so you know you don't want to waste a bunch of money you want to invest in the hunt primarily at the start and then you can start building gear around your strengths and you're kind of like your hunt style like maybe i got to be really mobile maybe i'm not a backcountry guy maybe i am right you know so that's yeah. going to kind of dictate the way the way that you navigate the the gear spectrum and two, just making sure that you're investing in good gear that's going to last you for the conditions that you're in. And, um, and then once you figure that out, figuring out how you can integrate them all together and keeping track of what's working, what's not so that we're not gadget because it's funny, you'll see a spectrum. You'll see the guys that they get her done in jeans and flannel and they don't yeah. think any of this is necessary. And then you got the really technical guys, but they're almost gadget uh, crazy. They're just, it's all about the gadget. The gadget's going to make me a better hunter. Well, that's not true either. You have to be kind of in the middle. You need to have good gear that keeps you comfortable and out in the field as long as possible so that you're getting that little edge to be successful and then not getting, you know, especially with cold weather gear, you definitely need a certain level of kit. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's a great point. And that's what all this is, right? Just you need some level of protection. Um, doesn't need to be uh, anything crazy, you know, I've had that coat for a long time. It's really good stuff. Kuyu, Sitka, guys, like stuff is really good now. It's hard to nitpick. Um, there might be some minor fit stuff. So that's what I would say is just get out there and, and figure out what, if you want to stick with Kuyu, Sitka, First Light, does, or, or Under Armour, figure out what fits you right, what's ergonomically fitting you right. I feel like that's why a lot of gear fails is if it's not quite fitting you right. And you're crawling around, you're ripping the armpits. If you're a bigger guy, just make sure that you spend that time to figure out if your kid is going to fit you right. And then just moving on, I always have, um, and obviously if it's super dry and I'm, I'm hunting mule deer, like this is all going to be skimmed down, but some, some rain gear and like I'm running the Yukon and then uh, Kunach bottoms. I've never had any issues with any of this stuff. Um, you know, this is for a more torrential downpour. Uh, it is noisier though. So that is something that you do have to consider. Any rain gear is going to kind of, you hear a little bit of rubbing. It is going to be noisier. So, you know, that's another thing that you have to be conscious of. If you're going to be running rain gear archery, it's going to be really tough. Um, same thing with your gators. Really pay attention to those clicks, clangs, like we talked about earlier, and then rubbing. Um, and then obviously have a cover. This icon pack's been really good to me. I've probably packed out five or six bulls, bull elk and uh one moose, bunch of mule deer with it. And it's it's never been any issues. Uh the frame I think is at its limit at about 150 pounds so but uh again just making sure that's comfortable for your body type. This might not work for you, right? You might want to use a mystery ranch or an exo um just you know, or, or a Sitka, you got to get them on. You got to feel them, feel how a, a pack that's fitting you, right? Like my friend, Brett, we're, we're packing really steep and he didn't have a pack that was set up, right? It was too tall and it's just constantly pulling them back. And it was just blowing out his Achilles and did a couple minor adjustments to fitment. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's his favorite pack. Now before he was ready to just throw it down the hill. So 
Yeah, that's a good point yeah, for sure. And then uh, just a kill kit, obviously. Um, and then bear spray if you're if you're running uh, some areas. You like if you're running a shotgun, you'd have to have uh, a discharge permit for some of the areas in in southern Alberta. So really? if you want to, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Kind of kind of ridiculous, honestly, but that's just the way it is. So to be in compliance with that, um, you know, or you're gonna run bear spray. So I, I kind of opt to run bear spray and just have my bow with me. Um, mm -hmm. but that's a personal choice. And then I'm just running the bench made, uh, saddle skinner. And then my wife gave me a real fancy, uh, Damascus, uh, knife too, that I run, um, with wicked knife. The only thing is though, with, with, uh, these like fixed blades and like, it's good to have that option of, of, like you said, the outdoor edge. We used uh, that out on my last moose. We used those outdoor edges on all of them, just because certain animals they just eat up the blades, and and you would you would want to have some sort of some sort of sharpening stone. That's a must. I ran out of uh, ran out of knife on one of my bowls, and holy crap! It was, I might as well have been trying to take the head off with a butter knife. So, and I forgot this in my truck. So just some sort of sharpening tool. Like even if you get the Lansky and I, I snapped off the handle and separated the actual, just the bar um, in a diamond, um, like a diamond dust blade bar, just so that you can get through uh, a mm -hmm. big elk or a moose, hey, that's, that's pretty important. Or if you're hunting with buddies and potentially could get two or more down, um, you know, it's something that you have to consider. And then, yeah, I have like exactly like you have Kevin, just go through quick with the rest of my stuff here. Uh, a Baco. I use this stuff at work. It's European. Outstanding stuff. I think Snap-on owns them. And I'm kind oh. of like a saw maniac. Uh, I've wrecked so many saws. And and lots of guys will say, well, you know, you don't need you don't need a saw for uh, taking a head off. Well, this is for utility. This is for fire. This is for um, hanging bags. Like if you get a bull elk down... Um, and you're struggling to find limbs, this sucker saved my ass on 2022. I climbed up in a tree a little bit, sawed off a limb, and then you can put some paracord around your game baits and get it hanging, hey, in those in those hot hot weather conditions. That's an absolute must. It has to be in the shade, and it has to have air movement around those quarters, otherwise you'll lose meat. So, you know, yeah. that's what I use this for. Just saw it off and leave about that much left, and then just right. hook on ropes and stuff like that. And then, two. I've had to use this for longer shots. Um, you know, with, with rifle, if you need to clear out branches mm -hmm. that you're, you're afraid you're going to contact or you, you need a shooting lane. Um, same thing with building a blind. If you're going to do ambush stocks with, uh, or, or blind uh, sits, having something utility like this, it's lightweight. Oh yeah. You know, they're not expensive and it's a really good saw. It's really impressed me. I've used it on three elk now and uh, a couple of mule deer hunts and stuff like that it's been pretty good yeah that's uh a great point there um yeah I, i've never even i don't even use mine like for cutting bone or anything but uh, i mean i i do use it a lot i actually just got this one this thing i used it this year it was absolutely money what i really liked about this one is that it's small and compact but uh, oh yeah, yeah. The saws are definitely handy. And like when we were setting White's backpack up and we were going through his gear list, I was like, you need a saw in your back. He's like, really? I'm like, yes, trust yeah. me. You yeah, you do, them. especially for yeah. fire. If you're struggling, you don't want to use your knife. That's I, I not don't gonna last. I use mine all the time. Like yeah. if I'm sitting in a blind, if I'm setting my blinds up, I'll be clearing lanes. If I'm sitting in a tree stand, I'll be clearing lanes or just like hunting in general. Um, you know, like even if I'm walking into an area and I'm going elk hunting, I'll do a little bit of bush clearing on the way in just in case I get lucky. And then for the way out, I just one last thing I have to do. Yeah, for sure. And always have these, whether they're in the truck. Um, if I'm yielder hunting, I won't carry them on me um, unless my shelter is requiring this, like a, a one person shelter. Um, but I would say that you must have these in case you have a bad pack out or you're in a steep terrain. Even if you got to go back to the truck, like Peter's saying, like some of this stuff you can just throw in the truck. And like you're saying on your one hunt, you can have some pretty robust stuff. So second trip, you might want these, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. throw them in your truck. You're not going to have them with you. 
Um, bladders and stuff, cold weather, always have two of these, maybe a big one and one of these just because of the freezing. And then I've noticed that for me personally, I'll run the bladders when I'm doing mule deer stalks. Um, for elk, I three. it's funny, I've ran out of water twice now. Brutal. So, you know, uh, three liters I found for me is that's enough to hunt. It's not enough to pack out. So four liters if you shoot an elk for me. Um, so I like to have, I'll probably switch this out to a two liter and a two liter and then even it out for weight, but a three liter is what I've been running. And then like you're saying, some like not to get too into the the water filtration side, but you just need something either if you're going to do a day, you need to have something in an emergency to get water. I ran out of water in 2022. You want to talk about misery. That's miserable. You run out of water. So just having iodine pills um, and, and with like some sort of pump system, whatever works for you, life straw, it doesn't matter what it is. It's like something really light that you can access in case of emergency. Um, if something were to happen to you. And then obviously you'll have your big kits with like your dirty water systems and all that if you're going to do uh, overnights. And then always having uh, extra reeds in my main pocket. So I'll, I like these little Phelps. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody else is running these, but they're just like, you can just stack in a bunch of them. So, um, and you're probably uh, the same way, Kevin, you'll have a couple reeds that are worked in and ready to go. And that's kind of what I'll do with this. You know, when I'm cold calling, I'll have a couple reads. I'm, I'm kind of seasoning, working in to make sure they're sounding good. And then as soon as they're at that point, I'll kind of switch them in here and then I'll have my oldest ones on the front and then my newest ones in the back to kind of start getting them ready. So I'll have a spare one of these in here and then I'll have one kind of around my neck hanging off to the side on my vinyl harness just so I can access them and, and you know, call if you need to switch calls for cow calls, stuff like that, it's ready and accessible. And then uh, just quickly here, always have a Merino um, base layer. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that the Merino isn't very durable. Um, it can catch, so be prepared to take a shit kicking um, with your Merino. But uh, I just don't smell when I wear these. So um, mm -hmm. I like the half sip, like the 145, anything that's a uh, like a lighter weight Merino for like mule deer and stuff. I like the half sip. So if I get really overheated, I can zip it down and have my chest kind of exposed and get some air movement. And then you still have the option. If you're sitting there, you're not so hot that you're worried about running your hood so you don't get sunburned. And I do like the long sleeve just to give you some level of protection, whether that's I got a nasty bug bite on my arm running t-shirts this will just potentially protect you against that and keep ticks out of your arms and stuff, right? So um, definitely have that no matter what. And then obviously you're gonna have your soft layer, your um, like your your uh, your just your standard hunting coat depending on the conditions. But mm -hmm. um, that's that's a regardless. And then some some gloves or st something, you know, whether that's just like a fleece or or whatnot. And then uh, I'm running the I I actually I run headlamps a lot in my work life. Like we do go in a lot of confined space. So I'm uh, really switched on when it comes to headlamps. I might go to one of the peaks ones cause I find the the red red light is pretty interesting but this is like a spelunking level one. Um, so it's, it's very bright. It has a shut off that you can lock it out. So that's a feature that you'd want to look at. And then um, if you can focus on what type of battery charging adapters you have and kind of uniform them all together across all your platforms. That way you can interchangeably use everything and charge stuff up. And uh, extra cords and stuff like that. And uh, that's pretty well it. it uh, you know, other than that, every, so this is like a standard kit. Like obviously there's some stuff that's gonna change. Like if I'm running my bow, I got a release and a spare release of some sort with me, right? Yeah, and, and then, a, in a uh, little bow kit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then and then with the the rifle stuff, I have a kestrel that goes in place of that. And then like a little ammo storage thing on, on on the on the pouch. So you know it's it's uh it's a lot of stuff. I'm a I'm a stuff guy. I'm, I'm not laughing stuff. at you, I'm laughing at Pete. I don't know what happened there. I just heard him from here. shit and he had to run off. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, that's 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 my my loadout. Dude, that was um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, really well detailed. Uh, we should let you win first. So I'm going to add a couple things that I 
Totally forgot. Like I said, I had everything nice and displayed on my table, and then I had a complete hissy fit when I couldn't get my audio working. So, um, so this is the uh, Plinter Pack from Mystery Ranch, and the same thing with you, Corey. Like I run a little, like a little satchel off the belt of it, and it doesn't yeah. have anything normal, but I just use that for. Stuff like a grab and go stuff. So like I'll throw a wind checker in there. I'll throw a my, an extra reed in there. Um, if it's getting close to dark and I'm you know grabbing a drink of water, I'll throw my headlamp in there. Which I'm running the Phoenix headlamp, and I don't love those. I really do like the Peaks ones that I was looking at. Those. The problem yeah. with the Phoenix is you hit the button, and it or the, the sorry, the, it's really easy to hit the button. So it it. You know, if you're moving around lots or you bump it in your pack or in your or in your pocket, it you turn the headlight on and it's it's off. So that's why I really like that Peaks one that has the double button. Oh, yeah. Um and some utility and rope too. Uh, paracord, I always have that and a and a sharpener. So for me, I use the Scotty sharpener, just a regular old you'll see if you if anybody's ever been on a commercial fishing boat, they'll see one on those, see one yeah. of those on there. They're absolutely deadly. And obviously in my bow kit too, I have extra releases, all that stuff. But I mean, like my bow kit, it could take half an hour to go through. So I'll leave that out. But yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. so just with this guy, I'll show you. Just the way it sits. Oh, it's yeah. It's kind of yeah. nice. Like it sits Is that rechargeable as well? Day. Is that rechargeable? That's why I kind of like it because it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's um, sorry, this way. It's, it's not, uh, I don't really feel it, right? Like it, you can suck mm -hmm. it really tight into the back, and that's one thing that, like, if you're if you're uh, blasting through brush and stuff or high wind, because like my job is all high wind uh, type environment. You want something that's really secure, and then you do have like it is a very uh, very bright light. It's wicked, but uh, like I say, like just like what you're interested in with the peaks, that's something that I'm probably going to be looking at just for hikes in with that red light. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, you couldn't hear me there. Is that rechargeable? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to start yes. like, so I think I'm going to switch everything. Like I was, I, a couple years ago, I switched everything. So it would just take those CR one or one, two, three batteries, all the same short little stubby they looked like a double A, but half the size. Yeah. Um, I switched everything. So it was running those, but I think I'm going to switch everything now to where it's just strictly rechargeable and then just yeah. get rid of the batteries if I can't help it all together. Yeah, this one's both. It's rechargeable, or you can use uh, trip blades if you have to. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's so a good if option. You're, if yeah. you're like in a bad spot, it's and it lasts pretty good. I think it's a max level. I can probably do three to four days. Oh, that's um, good. As wow, long that's as you're, good. as yeah. long as you're being careful not to like, you only use it when you have to, and you're, yeah, like yeah. you probably like if you're setting up your camp, you might. Like I'm not saying to go right to last light. Like obviously if you're on elk or, or deer or something, you got something going on, go for it. But if you don't have any action, just as long as you're you're aware of your your time frames and getting stuff going, if 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 you do need it, it's it's not a big deal, right? You're not gonna run out. Yeah. One thing I want to add to so with my charging stuff, what I switched to this year is you know how they have now they've come out with all those quick charging cables. I've switched everything to quick charge. Oh yeah. yeah. Um it just saves you so much time where you can charge your phone in a you know, fraction of the time. You can charge your headlamp like yours if you had to in a fraction of the time. So it's worth investing in those little things. It makes your life a lot easier, especially if, um, you know, you're halfway through dressing an elk or something and it start, the battery starts to get low. You could quickly pull out another, another light like this, uh, my little uh, flex tail um blower there has a light on it you can pull it out and then yeah charge that one. just to get you through it and yeah. too like like exactly like that big battery pack that you you have there mm -hmm. that you were showing um i have something similar to that and it's and it's got a booster uh cable set up yeah that, too, right? that, that's what that's exact same as this one does so and yeah. like you can say see it's pretty small it's hard to tell ap because my hands are so big fingerly hands <laughs> Fucking size, but yeah it, it's not overly huge and it's nice i think i paid like 150 bucks for that but that thing will battery will last forever and you it will also it i have also used that thing when it was funny when i was coming back from my last hunt uh, on the island i had to take a ferry and i was listening to a podcast had my key on 
and the battery went dead and i went to start so oh, i pulled yeah. that thing out quickly put it on my truck and it it boosted my diesel well, that's so good. enough to jump off so um, yeah anyway yeah good job thanks Corey. pete what do you got i'll switch uh, over now to you i'll put you on the spotlight here yeah no it's all good um i don't do any of the back countries to well, back country but i don't sleep overnight um i do have some uh some back issues I have to be wary of. So I'm a lot of day trips, but I am in the back. So well, and the th thing about day trips too, is like, not everybody has like a lot of guys that are working, they have two weeks off, you know, yeah. and that's the standard time off for, um, you know, any job. And if you have two weeks off yeah. and if your take is spending all your holiday time to do hunts and stuff like that, and you have a family at home, that's pretty selfish to spend, you know, to do that. So, uh, and there's nothing wrong with just hunting weekends, hunting after work, hunting when you can. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I mean, this year I, d I didn't, you know, do any major big trips and, you know, I was yeah. still successful and, you know, Corey is the same and, you know, you don't have to do these big mountainous excursions to be success to be successful. No, you know? no, yeah. not at all. Exactly. Like Pete, like I, I, same thing. Like I haven't, I haven't been doing overnights either. And because it's pretty effective, it's in and outs. You know, the area you're going to cover, you got a hunt plan. Like we talked about with tree line Academy, having those hunt plans keeps you efficient. So you're not screwing around, you know, where you're going to go. And then you can build your kid around what distance you're going to go and where, what terrain, where are you going to be? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I, I stay out in the bush, just, I've got a central camp usually, you know, with the trailer and yeah. stuff like that. So like I'm a doing spike camp kind of deal. Well, even like I'm lucky where I am, like I have lots of road access to certain areas so I can haul my travel trailer out to an area. And if I got to get up to the top of the mountain, it just means I'm hiking in the dark. That's all there is to it. I'm leaving yeah. at four in the morning and I'm hiking two, three hours to get from point A to point B, depending on where I am. Other times it's more, we'll be glassing slides. We'll be glassing basins and stuff and be like, okay, that's tomorrow's plan. If you don't have enough time when you find something, um, or you're just hiking, plain and simple. You cover mm -hmm. ground, try to figure out where you are. Uh, so I am in the bush a lot. I just, I'm not my back. I can't trust it to hike up to the top of the mountain and I'm going to camp at the top of the mountain. Like that's my plan. I'm not doing that. I can't do it. So I just have to understand what my body's capable of. And I love walking. So mm -hmm. I'll hike to the top, but I got a plan that I got to be you know, I'm not spending the night up there on purpose. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave it at that. Not but prepared purpose. if you have to. Yeah. But prepared if I'm half, if I have to. Um, so saying that this year I ran similar gators uh, from APE. Uh, these things have taken a shit kicking and I've got nothing but praise for them. Um, the materials, top notch, all the little tiny things that we talk about, buckles, straps, all that kind of stuff. I found them super easy to take on and off and uh, they really helped me through all the moose hunting I did this year and, and late season. I'll use them through the snow, obviously, and all that kind of stuff as well. How are they for noise, Pete? Uh, they were really good. You still have to watch. I don't think it matters overall, really, really good. But I think when it comes to, you know, your, like your bottom section of all your gators is going to be the hardest material just for wear and tear. So I don't think you're ever going to find one that's silent, but yeah. I did find them running. Uh, my other buddy had a set of scree ones and literally we're walking side by side. And these APE ones were night and day fighter overall. Yeah. We're walking through the same stuff side by side. And uh, so, so there is a difference there. So I really like these ones for that. Um, I haven't run a ton of other ones, so I can't compare them to that but I, I, I run into some gnarly shit. So I, I give the, I, I will be running these for a while. Yeah. And, safe, uh, safe to say if they were going to tear prematurely, you probably would have put them through that and they would have oh, yeah. failed. Oh, they've, yeah. yeah. They've been through hell yeah. and back. So yeah, they get my thumbs up without a doubt. Um, another thing I run, obviously I've got my rain gear with me all the time. I run scree. Uh, I've been running them for three, four years now little things i mean it's it's nothing for most people but they actually have them labeled too so when you put your pants in there you can just quickly run in grab your pants or your jacket that's just a personal thing for me you know mm -hmm. rain gear too that's one thing sorry pete one thing yeah. I, I forgot to add too is i always do have a set of rain gear tops and bottoms in my pack yeah and i'll use those for even in the cold weather just as a windbreak like it doesn't have to be raining for oh me. yeah it's well, just I, like yeah 
use them as much as you can for different situations. Right. So, well, and that comes down to like layering systems and stuff. Like a lot of people think that the rain gear is just for rain, but no, if you're in a windy situation, you put a puffy on and then put a rain jack over it. Fuck man. You're warm. Like I've yeah. sat up on this hillside glass with goats on the coast and that's run that. Forget well, about it's it. money. That's Comfort. the way to go. Yeah. So and go ahead. Just sorry, but this one thing I was going to uh, add guys need to keep track of your comfort level, right? Like if you're like, as you're going through your hunts, it's it, I, I kind of started making like, a, not really like a log, but like something that I noticed, like, Hey, I was wearing this, this were, was the conditions. Like, this is unacceptable. Like I'm not doing good in this. Like if I were to have shot an animal, I would have been hurting really bad, yeah. it, like cold wise or like wet. So, you know, like write down what, this is what the conditions were. This is what kind of the terrain was. This is what I was wearing. I was too hot, too cold, too wet, whatever. And then make those little adjustments and tweaks um, so that you're either, you're not over-prepared or, but if you're under-prepared, you're really going to notice that. And that as soon as I started doing that, you, you your layering system starts making a hell of a lot more sense yeah. to you. Like, hey, I have to have this in these conditions. There's no guesswork, right? You kind of, you have it kept track of and yeah. you label everything out and you say, okay, it's this, these are the conditions. Okay, I need this, this, and this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing over the years too, is kind of pulling stuff out, bringing stuff in. Yeah. Until you have it kind of wielded down for, for your yeah. territory and stuff. Um, knife wise, my main knife is actually one of these swing blades. Yep. I love this thing. It's just got a little button release. It's kind of a two in one. There's your gut hook. It's not like you can't do it with a straight up. Those um, work really good though. I had one too, oh, and then ended up in hunt or wide spec. Oh yeah, so you yeah. don't again. <laughs> one thing when you have kids that get into hunting, like I'm, I guarantee you, if I'm missing anything, I go look at his bag. I'm like, you like little you know, shit. Yeah, like don't yeah. pull it out if you want something and or you feel you need something. Don't take it from my bag without telling me. Oh, because no I'm doubt. the shits. I won't. I'll I'll just assume something's in there, and then I'll get to the bush and be like, ah. Oh, Quiet. Yeah, give me it. I know you have it. Especially <laughs> if he's not there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially with gloves, Kevin. You're gonna notice that. Like, where are my oh, yeah. two hundred dollar like state of the art grommet down well, gloves? And, like, yeah. And now he's... <laughs> I'm freezing my ass off. <laughs> For sure, man. Like he's always like one thing I noticed too is like because his feet are getting really big and like he starts wearing my shoes all the time and oh, all my yeah. stuff. Eventually, oh. then it's gonna be like my clothes and it'll be like my hunting yeah. clothes and it'll just be everything. Yeah, you should get yourself a set of these. These are really comfortable. Yeah, these hey, are dad, mine you need now. a set of these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so going on, this is just part of my kill kit as well. Um, I've got one of these from Gerber as well. I use this to get through. Uh, uh, just the uh, the pelvis and i'll actually go right up through the ribs and stuff too so i don't actually have to go elbows deep up into a moose or elk i've put this is i've used this thing on shit tons of deer an elk a moose i can't tell you how many deer um i'm still on the same saw you can get those bigger for be a little nicer to have a bigger one which they do have for the moose and elk just so you get a bigger stroke for getting through the the pelvis and, and ribs and stuff if that's what you got to do um i love that that's i i may invest in a bigger one and then when i'm elk hunting i'll bring that one and just have this one in the truck and when i switch over to late season into deer i'll put the small one away sorry the big one away and i'll just pack the small one because it's all you need um as for water bladders i switched over this year i went to a three liter as well i was finding the same things I think this one is, I got this on Amazon. This, you don't have to pay the, uh, the name brand stuff for some of these things. And, uh, I think this thing was like 35 bucks, 40 bucks. And I think it's Marchway or something like that. But the thing I like the most about this, it's got a shut off valve right there. And then it's got a couple quick disconnects and a cover and a cover. So having the insulate insulated wraparound for this, um, it just keeps is that like a neoprene freezing. over top of that hose? Yeah, it's neoprene over neoprene. top. So it just, I try to keep as much in my pack, like with my hose as possible in late season, because it doesn't take you long to figure out how long it takes for shit to freeze up and you can't get your mm -hmm. water out. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I love having it. And then it also has a cap on here too, which I've noticed helps out a lot. I don't know how many times I have had stuff leaking 
I forget to shut it off or whatever. And then, you know, you sit back on it or what, and yeah. then next thing you know, the bottom of your pack soaks and I rain gears freaking, you know, it's all saturated. Um, or covered in dirt or covered in dirt. Yeah. So yeah. a bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> So that was, I really enjoyed that thing this year. It was better than my old ones without a doubt. Um, going back to my knives that I forgot about, I do keep a spare one. This is uh, a Limitless. Uh, this is actually from Hudo. So just in case I run out a knife on my main ones, I've got a spare one. These things are like freaking razor blades. So you got to be really, really careful with those mm -hmm. things or like a scalpel. I mean, probably pretty awesome for keeping though, if you need oh, to get in there. Yeah. Absolutely. If I were, yeah, if I were definitely keeping something out, that's what I would use. Um, but generally I just run that fixed, you know, just that swing yeah. blade for my general stuff. But yes, um, that, that limitless knife is really nice for those, for those, uh, keeping and, and things like that, if that's what you're going to do. Um, I run a headlamp. I usually have two headlamps actually. And, I started doing, we had a guest on who gave us that tip of he flips one. I can't remember who it was exactly. Flip one battery in your, uh, in your uh, headlamp around. So you don't, I don't know how many times I've accidentally bumped it mm -hmm. and it's turned on in my backpack and I don't even know it until I go to use it and be like, no, this, these are brand new batteries. And it's like, son of a bitch. Yeah. That's what we were talking about. And that's one of the problems with mine. And then that's what I really like about those peaks ones is you have to double click them. They won't well, turn like off. That. You just click them. Yeah. You have to actually, and you have to, you can't just like click it. And then click it. It has to be a same. It, it's the same. This flex tail has this this little. Oh, um, okay. It has the same thing. You have to push it really quick, so it, gotcha. it won't be like you can't accidentally turn it on. Oh, I like that. I, yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, I run similar stuff. I've always got flagging tape with me for following blood trails and stuff, Ribbon, marking yeah. as well, especially marking where I shot from, because you walk oh, up yeah. to where it yeah. was and you yeah. turn around and it's like. Was it that bush or that bush? Because yeah. some of the shit I hunt is oh, so yeah. tight. It's just like immediately flagging tape comes out. If you get a good solid hit, tie it on right where you started. And then every blood drop, every oh, single yeah. blood drop, I will put flagging tape so that mm -hmm. it's like, shit, I just lost track. I can look backwards. I can step back. Mm -hmm. You know, so I keep a lot of it with me. Yeah, um, that's a good point. I never thought about putting it where you shoot from. I always put it same thing. Every drop or almost every drop if it's really close, but just, and then you look back, I mean, you can get a basic trajectory, but if you have a point of like yeah. where you shot from. Well, and if, especially if you're shooting with a rifle or something like that, like let's say you shoot through a little ravine and I'm not talking a super duper far shot, but even a hundred yards, if you've got a couple of big strands of flagging tape where you were, yeah. you can take a range as to where that animal was and you walk down there. Well, now when you're looking back, it looks totally different. But it's like all of a sudden, I, I know it was 123 yards. Well, I can go to where I think it was. Range back. See my flagging tape back there. I can range that flagging tape and be like, okay, I'm either, I'm not quite as oh, far yeah. as I should be. Yeah. 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 Or I need to go a little farther. To find the initial blood. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Point of impact. I get you. Yeah, that's a good you, point. You Smart. could have two spots that look very identical when you get up to it. So um, I've got a big first aid kit in my truck that my hunting partners always know where it is. I've always got a little little one here that I keep in my uh, my pack as well. It's got you know every all the little stuff that you need super mm -hmm. or super super glue all that kind of stuff in case you got to glue your cut together or something like that. There was a compression brand bandage that I do want to get. I saw it in a first aid course that I just took last year, and I haven't found it yet in the stores. But it's just basically it's it's super thick. It's got to be like this thick. You can wrap it around. You can tighten it up and it's basically, if you get like a, you got to stop bleeding or something like that in your leg, your arm or whatever, it fits all different sizes. I know they, they weren't expensive or anything. I just haven't found the right one. That's going to be the next edition that I have in my, uh, in my first aid kit. And that'll be one that actually goes in my backpack too. Um, but I don't have it to show anybody yet. Have you guys ever seen these long med things? I don't know if anybody can see them. Ones. So they're, you basically they're like a bandage but they have like these little zap straps on them and you clean your area your cut really well put them on there and you pull the two zap straps like yeah. these these are little adhesive pad bandages and they mm -hmm. stick like you wouldn't believe and it basically it's like a it's like a stitch we put it on we were at uh we were at the folks house last year and um why well, i got a, a golf club 
in the head from oh, shit. <laughs> well right in his forehead from his nephew oh, from his God. cousin so i mean you know it's like a golf club an iron to the head it's freaking split open and we're in rock creek right we're an hour and a half from Kelowna, and you know 20 minutes 25 minutes from the soyuz but there's nothing in the soyuz grand forks is about 45 minutes away nothing really there and I used one of those things, and man, like even on his head where there was hair and stuff, it's it still worked effectively. If we use those in our first aid course, the same place where I saw the other stuff, and yeah, those things are awesome. Yeah, crazy, That's a really good thing to have. Um, this is more of a once I get late September, October, I've always yeah. got some hand warmers, always same. a few sets. Those uh, hands of yours are so soft; you need to keep. I warm. need I need two to cover one, Kevin. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need the <laughs> foot <laughs> ones, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I run some Hudo bags as well. Yeah. I just find them very durable. And you, they're, you can reuse them, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. I love being able to wash. Uh, I've always got extra batteries. That's another thing. Both double A's, triple A's. And, uh, I just got a slightly different carry system for my reeds there. I think I actually stole this plastic thing from one of the original, primos yeah yeah calls yeah. that i use but that's i don't run primos i run wapiti river but i was like man this thing's perfect so i actually just drilled a whole bunch of holes into it so they breathe and dry out so they're not sitting yeah. there getting soggy <clears throat> and then i've always got this case too i don't it just stays in my pack because i got too many calls but it's i think wapiti river just has this case where you can hold just a buttload yeah of calls and stuff so that just sits in one of my side pockets I end up wearing out a few uh a few calls, but there's always I usually break them all in. Anything that I carry out there is already broken in. They're they're ready to go. I don't yeah, I don't bring out brand new reads with me unless it's an emergency. Uh my bino harness, this is Alaska guide, is what I prefer. But this right here, just like you guys were saying, um the Garmin inreach explorer there. Never I always take it with me. I've got it clipped on to the top shoulder here. So it's always right where I can get it. If I get seriously injured. Um, this one here, I like to say, I like this one for every single thing, except for the top part, which I didn't really think about until like we do so much slow, slow hunting, still hunting. Mm -hmm. um, if it folded back the opposite way, it would be better. That's yeah, my, out of the way. but that's, that's a me thing because then I don't have to flip this up to put my binos in. Yeah, yeah. Generally it's now I just, a lot of times if I'm in, especially whitetail, let's say mm -hmm. I just leave them hanging out because I'm only taking two, three steps and then they're up again. So I don't want the noise. Not that it makes much, but any of this movement is it's not, it's unnecessary. So that's my only complaint. Otherwise all my side parts are all zippers. So usually my, the one for my range finder, I just, I just leave it almost like half unzipped so I don't have to like in out and I don't want it falling out either. So it's just enough to hold it in where I can still stick my fingers in there and pull it out, you know, least amount of movement and noise as possible. I, yeah, I've got a vortex spotter, but I only pull that thing out if I, I'm not just packing it randomly. Mm -hmm. Unless I have a plan to go use it, I'm not packing. It's too heavy. It's too much weight. Yeah. So that's a truck item. If I know I'm, Glassing slides and stuff. I'll have it, you know, in my vehicle with me, but I'm not packing it up the mountain randomly. So I got that. My backpack, it's an old redhead. I've literally worn the pockets off it this year. I'm getting a new pack. And so far I have it narrowed down to, I believe I'm going to be running the Mystery Ranch Pintler just for a little bigger than what I have right now. So I'm not so tight with packing all my shit in it. But uh, Kevin, I think you have one. Yeah, that's the one I and have. I th yeah. think when I come up in the springtime to Kelowna, I want to try it on. Because again, it's like, I can see it looks like the perfect pack, but until you put it on, you're not going to know if it's going to fit your body or not. So mm -hmm. all the packs now, they're so adjustable that it's, yeah. um, man, I mean, you can almost get them to fit you. But like the the thing about the, Mystery Ranch is they come in like small, medium, and then like medium, large, and large, extra large. I think it is something like that, three different sizes. So you have to make sure mine is a medium, large. So yeah. you might, you're a little bigger than me. You might need a large, extra large. Yeah. So that's my plan anyway for, for backpack. Um, my tripod, 
Kevin was the reason why I ended up going with this as I was researching, you know, tripods, trying to see what I can get from my spotter and binos and all that kind of stuff. And originally I was going to go for a couple of the vortex ones and he ended up bringing out, bringing out a couple of them that he had from the past to our 3d shoot. And then brought out, I think you have uh this one here is, I don't, I'm going to butcher the name of it, but Siru S I R U I. Has that um, got the, I think it's the same one. You run the VA five head on it. Well, I believe that's what's on this thing. Yeah. VA five yeah. head. Yeah. That's I've used down here. I've used a lot of tripods, lots of them. Um, and that's the one I found out to be the best. Yeah. And it's, it's super smooth and there, there was no comparison. And for the extra, I think it was 150 bucks or whatever. It's yeah. one of those things where if I'm glad, I'm so glad Kevin brought up the other ones. Cause I was going to buy potentially one of the other ones that he has. And it's not like they wouldn't work, but you'd be pissed off <laughs> afterwards. If you're like, I should have just saved up the 150 bucks with how the difference in how smooth it is. And, and well, the head on that thing is unreal. And like, yeah. I think that with the head is around four between around, it's around 400 bucks. You get them on Am, you could get them on Amazon. Um, but I mean, like it's carbon, super light and the head on it is phenomenal. So it's one of those things. It's just a no brainer and super smooth to set up like with the legs and all that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces of equipment for, for everything. Um, one of the other things that I got into this year, Kevin and I mentioned it the other day. I pack this around a lot, but only if I know I'm going into certain situations. Um, this is just a pop-up blind. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Half blind. Yeah. It's just that half blind. Um, I won't. Yeah. If I know I'm going to a certain setup area, I'll bring it in. Um, I've got a couple elk areas where I'll start. And I'll stash it there too. Like I'll come, I'm not going to pack it around all day per se, but if it's like, I got a morning set up, this is where I'm just going to try to conceal myself a bit. Um, I'll use it for elk in that way. And for whitetail, especially if I'm rattling, I'll pack that thing wherever, because it's like, oh shit, this is a nice area. It's nice and thick, but I got lots of shooting lanes. I'm bringing that thing in. I think it was only like 50 bucks and I love it. Yeah. That'd be awesome for like sitting a wallow or sitting water. Yeah. Um, sitting rubs and your cold calling that'd be a good idea to have something like yeah, that saying that sometimes i don't mind a little bit of like i say i'm built for packing shit just like a mule so i don't care that this thing weighs a bit but when i gotta sit for hours on end especially moose oh, yeah, especially yeah. calling for moose this is like a giant <clears throat> beach chair and let me tell you i can sit in this thing for hours without having to move a muscle it is so comfortable and i practice shooting out of that too because you're sitting low to the ground yeah um and that's the key is you can bring whatever kind of chair you want you freaking learn how to shoot out of it because mm -hmm. it's totally different and you have to position your chairs like these so that you can maximize your shooting ranges because you're not just going to turn like you would on a swivel chair in a in a sitting you know in like a ground blind when you're in one of those, you got to position yourself and you got to learn how to shoot, even holding your bow straight out in front of your body, not to the side and learn the uncomfortable positions, because that is the limit with those is unless you can hear something coming in ahead of time and you can crawl out, which I've done yeah. with moose and stuff before. If I hear something, I'm getting out of my chair and I'll sit on my knees at the very least. Yeah. Cause why, why would you, why would you want to limit yourself if you don't have to, but prepare yourself ahead of time for that and yeah other other than that yeah i ran the ak boots i can't remember which line they were but i'm going on year two with them and fuck they're just they took a long time to break in but they are lasting oh i'm gonna get a couple more years out of them guaranteed so i think the only upgrade that i would do for another set of boots is get a one of their insulated colder weather ones and that would be about it. Yeah, I have both the insulated and unsulated. And then, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, they're just they, the ones I'm running. Um, they don't make anymore, but they make some. I just got wired a new set of them. They got some really cool stuff. So head on over to the webpage and check them out. And there is, um, we do have promo codes for those. So they're in the show notes for AKU. Yeah. And the thing is, if they didn't work, I wouldn't run them. 
It's as simple as mm-hmm. that, especially my feet. I, I don't care if a company gives me something for free, which I've never gotten anything for free. Let's just be clear on that. Yeah. Um, but if they don't work, I'm not using them. End of story. I am not going to run something that is going to shorten any of my hunts. Especially your feet. Especially yeah, these are what I use for bow hunting, these things. These are the rocket. Um, oh, yeah. These are the DFS GTX. These things are awesome. They're waterproof. Like they got uh, the the tongue goes all the way up to here, and then you put your gator on. Nice. They're money. So I just wear them because they're a lot more quiet than the boots, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're also not as warm. So in those hot summer, like the September months, they're awesome. So good job, Pete. One thing I wanted to add was um, this is one of the funny things that Wyatt took off my backpack. So I'm going <laughs> to cut another piece off. Yeah, this is just some accordion style foam you buy it at canadian tire wherever target i guess if you listen for the u.s but yeah i always have some of this strapped on my backpack and one other thing i have tucked in my backpack is this and like i'm a big fan of paper maps so this is just a cover you can see it's got a back roads map in there it's got a pocket for a more detailed map so if i'm going to hunt an leh zone that i've never been or if i'm going to the kootenays where pete is I always like to have paper maps. I do have some hunting my area just just because this is really thin. It sits in by my backpack. It's really super lightweight, but um, I like it in this case because you could pull it out and you don't have to worry about your map getting wet. You're wet and like basically right now it's zoned up. This is from my moose hunt from two years ago, my where I had the LEH, and it's basically just a quick overview of that whole zone. Um, super accessible, sits in the very like the back pocket of my backpack. So that's another thing I have with me. Nice. One other thing that I do have as well, and it's depending on if it's rock terrain, I have a little seat. That oh, I yeah. Just keep. I just tuck yeah. it under the lumbar support, and that's just like a glassing pad for if oh, it's yeah. rock. And yeah. I got to sit and I got to be glass. If, if like the hunt, is like if success of the hunt is glassing i I for sure have one of these because it just helps with your butt right and then keeps you all wet uh like if the ground's really wet too and then i'll always have like super thick socks the thicker the better um if i do have to take my boots off i'll line this on my foot and um yeah yeah and uh if if you gotta get in there obviously it depends on the train if there's lots of cactus Oh, dude, that doesn't even matter, cactus. Um, not <laughs> last year, the year before, I was hunting mule deer, took my shoes off, and I was just in like some real dry, uh, hay, like some real dry hay, and like my feet were cut up to shit from taking my boots off, my shoes off. They oh, were yeah. just cut to shit. I the picture he sent me, I freaking cringed, and I was like, Jesus Christ, man, what the hell did you do? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I was walking, look like uh. Um, what's his name there? Bruce Willis and um, oh, Die Hard, Die Hard, just blood yeah, all over the place, house. sweaty. I can't. Cool guys. Yeah. Well, can't that was good. It. I think we'll wrap her up. Uh, save yeah. anything else till next week. So, uh, again, listeners, um, you can view all this over at right now. So there's is a focus hunting page that I wasn't able to get access to. So I just put everything on my personal page, but I'm going to try to, I wrote YouTube and try, I'm trying to get the two so I can amalgamate the two together after, uh, once I can get back into the other one. So right now it's Kevin toy. I'm going to change that. So it'll be, uh, I'd like to use the focus hunting name that was on the old one, but I can't get access to it. And obviously you can't have two of the same, two of the same handles. So, um, if there's any changes, I'll note that. But right now, just head over to Kevin Toy and uh, you'll be able to see the full video. Okay, guys. Uh, Till next week, I guess. Betcha. Take care.